Hello, friends. This is another collaboration between Danielle and Tom Thibodeau, or as I like to call it, between Danny and Dad. Today, we're going to talk about the virtue of goodness. Goodness. Nelson Mandela, after he was elected president of South Africa, said to the nation, in order for us to have a beautiful South Africa, we need to take two roads, their names, goodness and forgiveness. Goodness and forgiveness. Believe in the power of goodness. The official title that I give myself when I go out to speak and what I'd like to have written on my tombstone is that he was an ambassador for goodness. I think it, it's only right because there's enough players on the other team, enough people who would like to criticize and destroy, a lot of people who need to be, who are cynical or judgmental, critical of anything that ever be happens. But on further reflection, does anything change unless good people get together and do good work? You see this all the time. We've seen it in our country. We see it all over the world. Whenever there is a challenge, good people come together and do good work. Put your nickel down on goodness. And I'm never disappointed, never disappointed. Wherever I go, I mean good people doing good work. January 7th, 2015, I'm Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin, getting ready to be introduced to speak at the Kalahari to 300 farmers. And as they're introducing me, my pocket goes off. That year I got a cell phone for Christmas. Don't know how to use it, but I got one. All of us people in our late 60s have cell phones, hoping to get pictures of our children and our grandchildren. If you have pictures, send them. This is what we live for. And I've opened up my cell phone and there's my wife and she's talking to me saying, Tom, Tom, Megan, our second oldest daughter, was on her way to work and the water broke. She's in downtown Chicago having her first child in a, in a hospital in downtown Chicago. Her husband's in the northern suburbs. My wife has her home is just frantic. And they say, here's our speaker, Tom Thibodeau. I looked at my wife and said, I got to go. And I put her back in my pocket. I stood up in front of the farmers and I began to speak. And I stammered and I stumbled and I was tripping over my words. And finally, I just stopped and said, this is what's going on in my life right now. Our second oldest daughter is in the hospital having our first granddaughter six weeks premature. Her husband's in the northern suburbs. My wife's at home just frantic. That's what I'm worried about and concerned about right now. Back in my younger days, I try to just make it through, pull myself up and get through by will. But now as I've gotten older, how important it is just to be authentic. This is what's going on in my life. And when that happens, the goodness of other people responds by cutting you some slack. A great deal of compassion came out of the audience and I could feel the energy and I began to speak. At the end of the speech, I walked off the stage and at the bottom of the stage, there's a man about five foot 10 with shoulders like ax handles, has a blue shirt on with Larry on the pocket. Come here, he says, and he hugs me. This is unusual behavior for farmers. And then he opens up his wallet with his arm still around me and flips it open and said, look at that, look at that. There's my granddaughter, there's my granddaughter, five years of age, full of life. She was born six weeks premature. Your granddaughter's just fine. I'm praying for you and your family. Did I need that at that moment? Hello, brother, got your back. Hello, fellow and bean. I got your good in mind. To show you how this all comes around, six months later, I was in Dubuque, Iowa, speaking to another group of farmers. Right now, I'm on the farm circuit. They consider me, me to be a moving speaker. It's a poor Wisconsin joke, I know. And I'm telling the story about Larry and the farmers yell out, he's here. In the middle of 300 farmers, Larry's waving at me. They say, are you going to hug him? I said, ah, you bet I am. We saw each other at their presentation. Well, every time I go to a dairy conference, there's Larry, and we see each other, and we hug each other, and we become friends. And the last time we saw each other, he said, now, brother, my wife's health is fragile. I need your prayers. Isn't it true we reap what we sow? Sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Sow a character, reap a destiny. If we are good and kind and patient understanding, that comes back to us. If we are mean, bitter, bitter cynical, and angry, that comes back to us as well. Put your nickel down on goodness. Now, here are the three characteristics of goodness. When we're in the presence of good people doing good work, one, there's joy. 
When you experience goodness, there is just an amazing sense of joy. This past weekend, my daughters came together and two of my daughters interviewed my wife. One daughter operated the camera. They had put together a list of very thoughtful questions and they spoke to their mother in the language of love. It was so good and there was so much joy. But there were also tears because those people who are most joyful oftentimes are the people who have carried the heaviest burdens. Hasn't that been your experience? Hasn't that been your experience when you've met good people? They also have suffered. They've come out on the other side and the gift that they bring to the rest of us is joy. Second, when you're in the presence of good people, there's a sense of peace. You can be who you are. You do not feel like you're being judged, critical, criticized, second guessed. This is who you are. I'm just at peace, my authentic self. How important this is in a time when we find so much disruption to be in the presence of other people who give us a sense of peace. Please remember the family of George Floyd, who asked us all to pray. Good people who had suffered greatly, but wanted peace for the people who were remembering their son and brother. And finally, when you're in the presence of good people, you want to stay. Isn't it amazing when you find a good place, you return a good restaurant, you return a good book becomes a good friend. To be in the presence of goodness, a good relationship, there's stability and how important that is for all of us, a place in which we want to stay. Now, why is the practice of goodness, this virtue, so incredibly important? Because our next generation of leaders are looking to work with good people. They're looking to do good work for a greater work. Their choices are ethical as consumers and as citizens. My youngest daughter has taught me that good is the new cool, and it certainly is. Hold ourselves up to the virtue of goodness. What's the opposite of goodness? Well, it's an experience of evil, the discouragement, manipulation. And what happens? Instead of a sense of joy, there's only despair and depression. When you're in the presence of evil and disruption that wants to destroy, there's no peace, only anxiety and confusion. And when you're in the presence of those who would do us harm, you can't wait to get out of there. So my friends, let's put our nickel down on goodness. Good people doing good work, hard work, noble work, sacred work. And remember, got your back. Thank you so much.